All right, hello and welcome to FMBP Dota's cast of Sevo Season 2. This is a match from preseason round 2. It was played on Monday, but I'm going to start casting every night. I just need the replays from match night, and I'm going to try to do one a night every week, as well as a live one Five on Thursday. Remaining. So I guess I'll just pick what I think will be the match of the week for that Thursday night game. Hopefully I have enough time to play my own game since I'm on a team as well, and then cast every night for the rest of the week. And that should be every night around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Central Time, because that is the time zone that Sevo uses. But here we are, inside of this game, we've got Faded, farming all day, every day. Ten Switch their name to Corey's the Cop, I believe, that's what it says on Sevo.com. And then former My Intent, or at least some of them from that team, now as Gotham City. Reserve time. So we're already into the banning phase here, Gyrocopter is that uh, that first ban out here by Faded, which I seem is a little strange to me. I mean, he's good, but I don't know. He's kind of fallen off lately. Team pick. Chicken MC does play a pretty mean, safe lane gyrocopter, though. I've seen that in the past, uh, especially in the show matches that Gotham City Radiant played. I can't remember who they played, though. And then pretty standard bans here. Now that Lifestealer is pretty much a top-tier ban. Just makes your, your tri lane too strong. And can also uh, safe lane, uh, given the right the lane set up there. For instance, Nakes versus uh, Lone Druid is very good for Nakes. And then Batrider, pretty much being banned out Ten every game or remaining. picked, but more so often banned. And then what I like here from Five Faded, that Visage remaining. pick, yeah, they're gonna be their first pick. Adopting that Chinese Dota scene, I guess. He's like first pick, first ban material over there, at least for the few games I've checked out recently. Faded also took out the Wisp, so just kind of scared of any Wisp potential if there's any good Wisp play on Gotham City, which there probably is. They play together a lot. They have some good synergy, but so does Faded. Shadow Demon and Lena here are the pickups for Gotham City, so pretty standard, uh, I guess, early game combo with the Disruption and to the Light Strike Array. So nothing new there, but just because it's just because it's old school, I guess. If old school is like a month ago, Ten seconds uh, it doesn't mean it's not still very strong. Five seconds remaining. But now that Nyx is always pretty much not banned, people aren't really as worried about him time. as there are a lot of other heroes to ban out. Nyx gets picked up a lot more often. I mean, he's a little weaker since the spiked carapace change, but ah. he's really not that much weaker. Teams have kind of just Dyer adapted playing back. against him because they'd rather not play against Nyx or they'd rather not play against Lone Druid or Wisp. Uh, instead of that Nyx Assassin, who can snowball out of control, but if you do a good job in the trial lane versus him, you know, he shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's just hard to play Ten against if uh, your team is already behind. Then you're having to buy sentries, you're having to group as five, five or at least four protect one, remaining. and it just makes it really hard to play against Nyx in that regard. Reserve and as I mentioned, no one wants to play against Lone Druid anymore. Even with the armlet change, he's just still such a good hero, dominates that top lane. And everyone kind of going back to that Radiance build from what I've noticed. And if not Radiance, you know, Tranquil on your person, Phase on the Bear or Venom into a Maelstrom or even a Quick Basher. Just been seeing the old school stuff come back. And now Faded with their first ban of the second oh. round. They take out that Juggernaut who has been getting banned and picked quite a lot recently. Just pushing power. It's pretty good mid these days. Uh, everyone's been kind of adopting that. And then the healing ward, obviously, as I mentioned, for the pushing power. Not to mention, his alt does go through things like rage and BKBs, so it is kind of a good insurance item. Also makes a great early team fight. And then Weaver also being taken out here by Gotham remaining. City. I'm curious what carry they're wanting to run. Normally the carry you see with the Shadow Demon oh. Lena is that Nakes, but he's already been taken out. Uh, Gyrocopter would be another good one. I suppose it doesn't really matter that much. Alchemist could be really good here. Uh, charge that up. Well, when the disruption goes out, throw it, and then the light strike array is there as well. And if the trialing doesn't go well, uh, or at least they don't farm as much as they they should, you know, if you were a safe lane alchemist, he does have the opportunity to catch up really fast later on in the game when he can find some space to free farm with that Grievel's gold. So that's why alchemist is always a great pickup. And if you're really pro with him, you can dodge those stuns with your ultimate. And then Darkseer here picked up as the potential offlaner for Gotham City. Could Ten possibly just abandon that lane uh, if it comes to that. 
But it looks like... Five seconds I don't know, I think with Visage and Nyx, it's gotta be the makings of an aggressive tri-lane from Faded here. And assuming that Faded pretty much aggressive tri-lanes every single game, it's gonna be an aggressive tri-lane. So Darkseer will find himself solo versus what looks to be a Warlock. Could go mid, but normally in the offlane, I think, uh, for the Warlocks. He's still pretty susceptible to ganks if the gank comes before he's level 6. But if he is level 6, he can turn those ganks around. Even in the competitive scene where people are organized, that chaotic offering just does a buttload of damage. Especially when you're ganking as a level 2 support. Or I guess 3 or 4 if you're doing well. 10 seconds remaining. And how does this work? What do we do now? We're picking. Gotham City is picking Five again. Their, their fourth pick remaining. here. And then that pick swings back over to Faded, who also banned out Clockwork at the end of their Reserve second banning time. phase. So Clockwork... Even with his uh his cogs not hitting magic immune, which I don't know if that was necessary. I mean, Clockwork's great. They still create a physical barrier, so they are still pretty decent uh, versus BKB dependent carries or nakes, and also the hook still stuns through BKB. Maybe the the cogs actually pushing magic immune heroes was just a little too much icing on the cake. And we all know that too much icing on a cake is kind of gross. But Gotham City taking a while to figure out their fourth pick here. Uh, they need a mid and a carry, so this could be either or. It will go back to picking and picking, so they're going to have to reveal their their mid or their carry, and that'll Faded will be able to re react to either one of those they choose, or both, if they can find a hero that fits that, since they pick last. So the Magnus is picked up pretty standard. Also a hero that's not getting banned out nearly as much uh, recently. But it will be strong, it will give the Empower to any carry that Gotham decides to pick up. And of course that RP potential, uh, and don't even forget that, the Vacuum RP wall potential, that'll just be insane. Lena, also very happy to throw a Light Strike Array onto anyone who's been uh, reverse polarity. And obviously that's all if everything goes perfectly, but we'll see what happens for him. And looks like farming all day every day, it wants to just go farming all day every day as they pick up that Nature's Profit. So that could be the offlane. We could see this Warlock going mid, um, but I don't know. I think versus a Darkseer, Nature's Prophet should do fine. Warlock could go mid, remaining. and then they pick up another carry, or Warlock could just be the carry in the try lane. It seems a little Five funky, but it would remaining. offer a pretty strong early to mid game, but you'd have to end it fast. Reserve time. Although I don't know if that's even the case. I mean, they have the Nature's Prophet, which can be a carry in the late game. Warlock can carry through the mid game. He's pretty much on par with the Magnus of, you know, the big alt is his playmaker. Uh, Magnus argu ha arguably has a little bit, little bit more carry potential. Uh, you know, get a Crist or a Battle Fury or something on him. Dire team ban. But I don't know. We'll see what happens here as the, the two last picks go through, but we have some bans going out. Faceless Void is taken out by Gotham City. Yeah, that would make it kind of hard to... I mean, you can catch the Darkseer if you need remaining. to use the ult to kill Darkseer, which is never really a bad thing. Uh, they're going to be sort of clumped remaining. up once that RP lands, so if Void has good positioning, he can sort of just stop the fight after that RP gets off. Uh, and then if there's a mech or any sort of heals can go out. Also, if that Chronosphere goes out, it lines up for Warlock to drop a really perfect Chaotic Offering, and then Nyx to follow up with a multiple person stun. The Familiars can get in position as well. Although I think they fixed uh, the familiars being able to fly through Chronosphere. Radiant team pick. And now we got the Kunkka band out. Uh, they just don't want to have the potential of the Kunkka Shadow Demon in the mid lane. Everyone is sort of doing that more and more often these days. As it is very strong, and even the, the heroes that are pretty good against it, Puck and Quops, are still pretty easily baited into to dying with Ten that combination. Remaining. And throughout the game, you know, it just makes your movements, they Five have to be that much more precise. Remaining. If you're out of step a little bit, or a little too far ahead, too far behind, you get X marked, you get disrupted. I mean, that's a pick off, someone's gonna die. And if Kunkka does well in that mid lane, he can pretty much just do that by himself without the Shadow Demon, which, once X mark is level 2. But now Gotham has to pick their carry here, Sven stands and it looks like they're going to go old school here. Pick up that Sven with that Empower Cleave. Can be very strong. As soon as Sven gets that, that crit stick, that Daedalus, a BKB, 
Magnus with Empower. Gotta watch out, but Warlock's Chaotic Offering does go through that BKB, so they'll be able to stun him up a little bit there. Uh, for the early game, he might be able to be kited around a little bit. I mean, Visage is going to hit him hard with that Soul Assumption as Sven with Cleave or with that Empower is going to build up a lot of hero Five damage to charge Soul remaining. Assumption. Reserve time. And it looks like Gotham could take that aggressive. But as I already noted, Faded always goes aggressive, so... Might see some uh, five-man jungle scouting from both teams to actually figure out the lanes before the, the creep actually spawn. And Faded using up almost all the reserve time on their last pick here. Will it be a Spectre? Spectre Warlock. It's pretty strong. It's a little gimmicky, I suppose, but, I mean, there is a lot of damage there. Oh, look at that! It is going to be that Spectre Warlock. So that I'm excited to see. It should be fun. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, Dignitas over here on Faded right now. And Saibi is the mid player, so he will be going mid. And before I just introduce everyone, I'll just formally introduce everyone. You so really for the Dire, for we've got Faded farming all day, every day. And a pause. I could fast forward through this pause, but I feel like I should wait and pretend it's live. There's Dimitri's very, very annoying frog courier. But at least it doesn't bug out anymore, so it's much better. I'm not sure who Peon is here, uh, or on the title screen he was have B. Uh, is an account with like 11 games, so it might have just been someone they added to the roster for a backup. It seems like Lopert is the person that uh, got him is missing tonight, so I guess just a stand-in that they have on their roster. But anyway, back to those introductions. So we got Theory, that offlane possibly just jungling Furion, but given the amount of regen he's picking up, I think he's going offlane, going to try to do those pools. We've got Cory, the one and only on the Spectre, going into the top lane with the poor man's shield, Iron Branch, and he was pulled Tangos there by King Kraken. So pretty standard, uh, bringing it back a couple months in the meta when that's what you would do, just get that poor man's shield, pull some Tangos, head top. Uh, Saibi in the mid lane in full regalia here, just looking like a baller. Did he buy that whole set? Maybe one of Saibi's uh, many fangirls gave it to him. And Dimitri here on probably his favorite hero because he is a Russian troll. We've got Nyx Assassin. He's got those wards since consumable, so pretty standard build. And King Kraken playing that Visage who is just an amazing hero. I'm not even paying attention to possible conflict over here as Gotham sort of invading the dire jungle but let's go ahead and introduce Gotham on the radiant we've got chicken MC pretty uh, potent one-on-one -on -one offlaner here on that dark seer as he heads down uh, to that safe lane we got orbit I guess the sort of begins. signature Magnus I mean I've, I've cast Gotham quite a few times or my intent with orbit and I've seen him pull some amazing plays on that Magnus so possibly a player to watch this game and peon here, going top for that aggressive tri lane on the Sven. Also, a pretty standard build. Also, picking up that clarity, so needs the mana after he throws a stun. Pretty mana dependent hero is Sven. And Cory supporting on the Lena wards as well. Already threw one down on the river. Uh, looks like it's to help mid out a little bit in this cheeky little ward spot. Does show the rune and won't get dewarded because it's. Shows the rune and won't get dewarded because it's a little bit. Uh, this is more, I don't know, strange, odd ward placement, but I like it actually. It's pretty nice. And finally, Chef Dota on the Shadow Demon picking up the sentries. So, looks like I was wrong. I said faded only ever aggressive try lanes, which is true, but tonight we find them uh, set up in a defensive posture, picking up that specter. Uh, Visage, an amazing hero, I, I think, to put into any tri lane situation. Arguably a little better on the aggressive because of the burst, but... I mean, also good defensive, because if you're going against an aggressive tri lane, they're gonna want to kill you. That is the goal of the aggressive tri lane, as well as, you know, taking away some farm, so... When damage is done, Visage, Visage I can't talk tonight, can shine, so... Look for some big plays there. And then Chicken MC going against Nature's Prophet. 
Darkseer, uh, after a couple levels of Iron Shell, I think should dominate that lane. But Theory, as an Nature's Prophet, has the opportunity to just abandon and head into the jungle, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal for him. And just get some nice last hits while he is down there and some quicker XP. As Ion Shell approaching level 2, and will be level 3 pretty soon. We've got an disruption on the top lane on the Spectre, so that's Cory. He's got Dispersion, though. Uh, and his Spectral Dagger will really be able to get out of there. He's... Wow, Nyx Assassin comes back with a nice stun. The first blood is drawn by King Kraken. Cory does drop, so both carries down in this lane. But King Kraken, uh, I was going to say he's not done yet, but actually out of mana here. And who's this? Theory has TP to the top lane. Dimitri with another stun. Barely living. Going to live through that too. That one stun's not enough. Theory also on low life. The Light Striker Ray lands. It looks like Chef Dota might get this kill. He throws the disruption. Saving that XP. That's actually a really good play. Delaying that kill so Peon can run in and catch up on some of that XP. But either way, uh, it's a two for two trade. Theory left the bottom lane on the Prophet. He also got some experience for the kills. He's almost level four now. Uh, no, okay, I guess maybe not because Chicken MC is four. But the first blood goes the way faded, so arguably a little bit better of a trade for them. But still a close game. Won't really give anyone a crazy advantage in that tri lane as both carries did die. And then the mid lane, let's maybe check some last hits now. Saibi here at 10, so doing well. Let's see what he decides to go for. It looks like he's set up for a bottle build. Um, possibly a mech or just an ag, especially that ag's in the mid lane. It is pretty strong. And Corey picking up a wand. I would imagine most of the supports are trying to pick those up. As uh, the trial on versus trial clash here. Shadow Demon's got one of his. Dimitri and King Kraken now coming back to the lanes. So might see some more action uh, in this tri lane up top. Curious of what Cory's gonna go for. I think the Diffusal build is great since they changed the haunt to last that full seven second duration. But what I think is better is Phase Drums Yasha for that move speed because the auras stack over to your haunt illusions and then you max Desolate and when you alt, you kill under level supports. Like, no, no big deal. <laughs> Because your haunts illusions are magic immune, they can pass over terrain, and when they're going to be that fast, you can pretty much kill the supports every time you ult, and then turn that into a manta later on. And I just think that's a really great build, but they are kind of going for this massive team fight AoE, so maybe we even see a Radiance Diffusal come out of Cory here, as Radiance did get a bit of a buff. And with that Radiance, Fatal Bonds here from Saibi in the mid lane will do a ton of damage. Nice. And then for Gotham City, we already kind of know that their MO is just going to be get spend some items. Doesn't even that need that many because of the Empower on the Magnus. Land a 2-man to 4-man RP. I mean, it doesn't really... Anything more than 1 will be pretty nice if it's on priority targets. Sven will just 1 cleave him out of there. And then you've got the man advantage, even with the Warlock ult. But we'll see how big of an impact this can have. Um, Chaotic Offering, arguably a lot easier to land than that RP, but Orbit, no stranger to Magnus, so we could see him make a big place here, potentially. And looks like he's having the rune control at least a little bit here. Neither of these heroes in the mid lane that great at rune control. And they're probably both arguably rather dependent on the bottle crowing. But since they're both dependent on it, the nerf kind of hits them both equally. Won't be a big deal. I mean, Saibi can regen the health, obviously, with the heal. But you're going to run out of mana eventually, unless you farm those mana boots pretty quickly. So no action yet in the tri lane. No one's decided to go. Let's check out the farm in the tri lane to see who's sort of winning after the kills were even there. We've got 16 on the Spectre and 13 on the Sven. So I guess you can say faded with the ever so slight edge. Maybe we'll check the gold graph just to see what the game actually thinks. Uh, yeah, 750 gold for the Radiant, and then 1,000 XP lead for the Radiant. Oh wait, that's backwards. Whew. So the game thinks that the Radiant is farming better, and that's probably true. The Darkseer with 33 last hits, it's coming all down to that right there. Chicken MC creep skipping here. Sorry, I just noticed that Dyer's Getting every last hit pretty much, attack. 34 right now. Doing a great job down there, as he normally does. So that makes I sense there. And the XP alarmist. also probably coming out of that Darkseer as well. I would assume he's going to be the highest level in the game. Attack. He is level 7. Uh, Nature's Prophet level 6. So Darkseer with a nice little lead. Doing very well. Going to have a big impact this game with that wall vacuum combination. As it's really just the levels you need for that. Not that much farm. Having a quick mech on the Darkseer is obviously very nice. And they're going to need a quick mech pipe here. Going against this team fight potential for that chaotic offering. And with all the AoE damage too, I mean, 
Spectre's gonna shoot. His cooldowns for Soul Assumption will be four seconds, and it'll be fully charged every single time he shoots it in a team fight. It's gonna be huge. And Dimitri here, still level two, getting really low. There goes that disruption. Corey here gonna come with a light strike array. Goes a little bit too early, and that allows the spike carapace to go off on Peon. And then a nice two-man stun by Dimitri. Will he actually be able to get out of this? No, the Dragon Slave just does too much damage. But Sven, Lina, and Shadow Demon already going down. It looks like Visage threw off a, a blast there. Theory came in, and Spectre with a nice dagger on two. So picking up a double kill there is Corey. So very nice trade for the Spectre, who is normally thought of as a very late game carry, not getting a lot done early. I would argue with the Desolate Max, which he's not really going for. So I don't know, just good team fight, two man stun. Bit of a misplay there by Corey. Corey, I've got to differentiate the Corys. Uh, on the Lina, missing that light strike array just barely. He kind of got caught up in the neutral creep, so it was a little unfortunate for him. And now we have see, where is Magnus? Magnus is rotated to the top lane, so it's buying more space for Saibi. So if no kills are had in the top lane here, it's a really good position for Faded to be in. But the dagger goes out. Oh, the Soul Assumption misses as well. And then there's a two-man RP by Orbit. And nice two-man Light Strike Array as well. Dimitri's going to go down. So immediately a three-kill rebuttal there. Taken out the tri lane after the tri lane was taken out. Orbit picking up a lot of XP as a result of that. But Saibi level eight. Orbit only level 7, so... Saibi 7, a nice game. He Radiance went Midas, even, so... The longer this game is drawn out, normally those no magic abilities and those big ultimates kind of decrease in time as people get BKBs, but with that Midas, it pretty much allows Saibi... <laughs> that was a funny dodge. Attack. ...to stay in the game the longer it goes. He can get that Axe, he can get that Refresher. He'll have the levels as well with Midas, so... He'll be staying in this game, and he'll be relevant for a long time. Arguably more relevant than... I guess the Magnus will be. Although that's not necessarily true. Blink, Mana Refresher on Magnus is also going to be pretty devastating. Dimitri finds Chef Dota here in the top jungle. Spike Carapace goes out. Doesn't stun anyone but the Seder over there. A nice big ultimate there by Theory. Will Chef Dota be able to get away? Corey's going to be bursted down there by the Soul Assumption, which now already back to full health can shoot one out at Chef Dota if they have the vision. There goes the ult. There goes the Soul Assumption. And that's going to be enough. Corey picks up that kill. Theory picking up the kill before that on the Lina. And now Sven not really going to be able to farm for quite some time. Uh, Sorry, if you check out the last hit charts, now Sven at 27. Still ahead of Spectre, actually, but Spectre with uh, 3 and 2 kills. Sven just 0, 2 and 4. So Dyer's Spectre having a little bit more of a fun time in this trial. Now Theory heads back to the bot lane. He doesn't want to lose this tower to the Keep Skipping Darkseer as he is an Aegis Prophet. And now we're diving here at the tier 1 tower. TP's come in, Blue's up top. I don't know who Blue is. That's going to be Chicken MC. Does he have Vacuum? No, he doesn't. But that's a nice stun on Dimitri. He goes down. Orbit doesn't have RP for 10 seconds. Uh, doesn't have the mana anyway. Maybe with the wand he will, but not after that skewer. There's a Chaotic Offering lands on 3, barely. And Saibi finally gets involved. Looks like he might just die. The Fatal Bonds went off. All he has to do is chase Orbit, and it looks like he and Chicken MC might get a kill on the Sven. Sven, actually not that low. Orbit, even lower now. So who is the other one? Darkseer has it on him, right? Yeah, have to do some damage to that Darkseer. Could be enough to take out that Magnus. To He's violence. only got 100 HP right now. I've never seen and as this is going down, we've just got so Theory in the bot lane pushing that tower. Bottom tower is under attack. Check out those gold graphs again. Still a thousand and a thousand, so the Radiant are slightly ahead of this. And that's due to a very Radiant's nice uh, RP tower up top under a little bit earlier there by Orbit Has that ever to wipe the tri lane after their tri lane got wiped. And Theory's alt was off cooldown. I was wondering where that Radiant's was. I think it got used to start that fight off. Attack. And then that fight was pretty drawn out, so he uses it again there. Also going to push all the waves. Radiant's bottom tower is under Supports attack. here for Gotham and Sven as well. Has they don't really want to go back because they need this XP in farm, but they're so low. And so beat down compared to the three heroes here in the tri lane from Faded. Uh, they pretty much just need to leave. Even Peon, I mean, he's only got 400 health, one ability, and a soul assumption. He's pretty much going to die. Let's see what Theory is going for. It looks like he still might be going. It could just be finishing Treads, but it's kind of odd to just go Treads first on the Nature's Prophet. So maybe he's still going Midas. It'll be a little late, and it'll be maybe even a little greedy with Saibi having a Midas in the mid lane. But he's back up to 1,000 gold. So he's not doing too bad. He's got his mana boots right now if he needs them. He's got a smoke attack. purchased up as well. Looks like he wants to be able to roam um, undercover there. Doesn't want to be spotted by wards. As no one ever does, but... I don't mean to be alarmist, It's a pretty good item choice, actually. Dyer's He'll probably roam out again attack. in another uh, 50 seconds. Or we'll just see his teammates group up in the mid lane behind him to try to take out the mid tower. 
And I think that's the first tower of the game. Chicken MC is going to get it in the bot lane. So he's having a great game. Top of the net worth now at 4.17k. 4,100 gold. Spectre at 4,000. Side B on the Warlock. In trouble in the mid lane, but he's at 3,700. That heal, though, showing why it's so nice. The Demonic Purge goes off, and it's not enough either. And now it's turned around as uh, the ult from Spectre is used. Doesn't opt uh, to jump to an illusion as in the top lane. He got Chicken MC, but he is pretty low after that, so... And had no mana, so wouldn't have done lot, a much if he went to that mid lane. Yep, Theory did go the Midas, so... I don't know. It's never really too late on Nature's Prophet. It's always a great item to have. AFK farm. Stay up in levels. Under attack. Uh, probably gonna go Shadow Blade next, so just try to keep that split pushing down when they need it. And Kraken stunned up. He's got the Familiars now. Let's see, uh, see how familiar he is with them. Don't want to feed those over, they're 100 gold apiece. I don't know if they get hit by Cleave, that'd be kind of annoying. But I know Gyrocopter's flat cannon still hits them, which actually, that completely explains the Gyrocopter ban out and the banning stage. That makes a lot more sense now. Is under attack. I was gonna say, because he's not that great of a healer anymore, or even that reliable of a carry. He needs a lot of items before he can be a huge damage source in the late game. But his mid game has not been changed at all. I mean, the call down Rocket Brush Black Cannon is still great. Is an extraordinary amount and would have fit well into their lineup, actually, but the Visage makes sense with all the AoE damage. I've already seen his Soul Sunset is always at 100%. Is under attack. Now, Chicken MC on the chase, being very aggressive. Doesn't have wall yet, throws the vacuum out on two, but it doesn't land. Corey's got his Chaotic Offering now. Orbit RP on cooldown. This is probably the time that Faded should fight here in the top lane. They've they're going to have a huge advantage, especially with Sven in the bot lane with no TP. I mean, he can buy one from the side shot, but when he TPs in, he won't have any mana to stun because he's only at 160 right now. So I can understand the hesitation from Faded to fight up here in the top lane right now because they don't know what I know. Uh, although they might have their suspicions about the RP being on cooldown, and they could just click on Sven to see that he can't join the party. So we'll see what happens here. Darkseer coming back over. And a helpful tip, maybe, for players of the game. I don't know if anyone loves to play Spectre these days, but if you throw the Spectral Dagger at a hero, it will only hit that hero and then stop. If you ground target it in a team fight, you can hit everyone if you aim it well, and then that'll create a path that every single person runs away creates a path of the dagger. Radiant so it makes a nice team fight little arena attack. there for Spectre. Orbit was no surged up looking for a pickoff with an RP things? as it's off cooldown now, so the, the window to just fight straight up is kind of gone. Say, but Radiant's now moving to a defensive posture attack. in the top lane is faded as they push down the mid tower, so they get Radiant's their first tower, tower in the mid lane. Fallen. Arguably the Someone best tower to get. It does get the most map control for. Got him. Oh, there's a skewer in. The Grave Chill. No RP has landed yet. There goes that ult. Yeah, he ground targeted there. You can see the two paths coming out. Orbit pops RP, but it's just on Cory. Dimitri gets caught in that light strike array. He's going to get pretty low. Able to just carapace and stun out of that. At least a familiar stun followed up, and then another familiar stun. So it looks like King Kraken knows what's up. And now there's the damage on Orbit. This is going to be enough to get Orbit. As Theory TP's in as well, then the ultimate is dropped on Chicken MC. They'll be able to get him. I don't know if they will be able to get him, but they will be able to get this tower uh, with the help of that golem. Not a problem. Structures are not only fortified, this will be their second tower. Meanwhile, Sven is just uh, free farming in the bot lane. He's getting closer to a BKB. He's CPing into this. I don't know if that's the greatest idea. As he stuns himself up there, so nice quick fingers there by Dimitri. The soul assumption goes off as well. He heals on the golem, so it can't be used uh, offensively. Theory vacuumed over. To, I didn't even know he could do that. He was fighting up here. Saibi's getting uh, focused down. King Kraken doesn't have the mana to shoot off his soul assumption. But Saibi, uh, very tanky, just going stats build, not getting his upheaval, which is quite standard. The poisons are stacking up. There goes the ult, but he's healing more and more as time goes on. Looks like he's going to be just fine, actually. And now the familiar is doing a lot of damage to a, only a level 7. Actually, level 7 is pretty good at this point. RP is on cooldown. King Kraken should be able to get away from this. Pops the Grave Chill, even. And Cory just sitting up there in the secret shop, not able to, to get out. He's still got mana though. Dyer's they could just go on King Kraken. And slain. the courier goes down. I was told to look that a courier died. Radiant's bottom tower is being subjected died. to extreme violence. Oh look, oh, Radiant's check. bottom tower has fallen. Ah. <laughs> 
There it is, I found it. That's a weird death animation. Just, it's a dying frog. It makes me happy, Dimitri, that your frog is dying here. But anyway, I was looking at the courier and I missed a kill from Spectre. Spectre took out Darkseer in the bot lane. Uh, with that desolate now up to level 3, 50 bonus damage Must does quite a bit. Myself? Let's see, Dimitri now level 6, he's got mana boots as well, he can kind of roam. Dire he's gonna find Chef Dota, attack. Chef Dota could be in trouble, he picked up a haste, this isn't gonna be enough. Theory's all goes off as well. And then the ultimate, was that the ultimate? Yeah, I think it was. From Cory coming out, TP'd in immediately. Now he's chasing Peon here, the Desolate doing a ton to of damage. Violence. Even with the war cry, that, that spectral dagger path giving him the speed to keep up with him. And that's three kills for Nell, 14 to 9 in favor of Faded. And now with a 2k gold lead, at 1.5k, 2k gold, or XP lead, Faded find themselves ahead in this game, uh, at least in terms of the grass for the first time. And the Shadow Blade has been picked up now on Nature's Prophet, so if he can really get that push, split push started, force the supports, uh, they're gonna have to buy sentries and dust, dust already on Chef Dota, so he knows what he's doing to make sure Nature's Prophet can't just split push and get away. Although with the Shadow Blade attack, he might be able to just take out Peon right here. There's the Sprout, he moves away. And nice follow-up stun there by Dimitri. Peon gonna be taken out here. And Nick's gonna actually pick up that kill. Meanwhile, uh, the uh, supports for Gotham here are smoked into the bot lane. Magnus picks up a Blink Dagger, so he'll get the ball rolling with that. Uh, so we've seen one good RP already, hopefully another to follow soon. There's a disruption on Cory, and then Cory with the Light Strike Array. And that Spectre is a dead Spectre. <laughs> they have no wards into the jungle, it was a smoke ink. Uh, it did walk, they walk past these here in the mid lane, so... I don't know, good smoke ink. Definitely worth it there. That's what you want to happen. When you smoke ink, you just want to kill the carry. Or mid. But it looks like Faded will find themselves another tower in the top lane. Familiars are just going buck here, just knowing to give some space. One stuns, the other one doesn't. Middle tower is under attack. Now the tower looks like it is in deny range. The stun goes out there by Peon. Dimitri looks like he vendetta dodged it. And now this tower isn't going to be denied. They really don't have enough uh, fuel in the tank here to force the fight against Ford to not have that be denied. Tower so maybe, I don't know, the Fortify was nicely used Let and they defended it. Be said of that tower. So that is how you should that use Fortify. Don't just Fortify towers to delay a push on a tier 1 or something. If you're not going to defend it, it's like really not worth it. Because then they have the opportunity to push to your tier 2 and you're not going to have a Fortify for that. And bad things can happen, but if you're going to respond to it and you can get a deny off, definitely worth it. And it looks like the familiars were just resummoned, not wanting to feed them over there as King Kraken. Now Dimitri being like chased down, he's popped that spike. Carrot basically gets one man stun on Chicken MC. Dimitri's going down for sure. And Chef buying uh, Chicken MC some time. RP on nothing. They're actually just illusions of Spectre. So now RP's down. Uh, Chaotic Offering is up, so we see Saibi walking himself to the top lane. And he's got that Ag Scepter, so 19 minute Ag Scepter on top of a Midas, I'd say Saibi is doing quite well, 91 last hits in a mid lane position is pretty good. Chicken MC is at 103 on that Darkseer, uh, Saibi as I just said at 91, then we've got Peon who's actually finding quite a bit of farm as he's uh, been switching lanes at 93, 94 now, 95, <laughs> just keeps going up. Uh, we got Nature's Prophet here, going Orchid it looks like after this <coughs> Shadow Blade. And then who else do we got after that? Then we have find ourselves Magnus with the Blink Dagger, Mana Boots, sitting at 75 last hits. And then finally Spectre, Cory, not being able to farm as well as he would like probably, but he's found himself 5 kills. Dyer's and unfortunately for him, he's died 4 attack. times. But check out the net worth, which is what really matters. He's at 6.3, so he is ahead of that spin. And leading that net worth now is an Aegis Prophet, as you might expect. Stroke of sorts. Yeah, like offering still not used. There, it might go down here, yeah, as those Fatal Bonds landed. He's going to take out those two supports. Probably worth it just to pick up those kills. That XP orbit going to get caught in a tree sprout. Chicken MC tries to save him with the vacuum. Now Peon pops God Strength to go in off of this. The familiars are there. One stun doesn't land. There's a sprout. I don't know if that other familiar was used or not yet. But either way, they're able to get that kill. Saibi picks up a triple kill, showing the power of Warlock. He saw that good Fatal Bonds on two and just decided to drop. And he's got Ags as well. So drops two, so four kills going the way of Faded, pretty much uncontested. 
19 going up to 11 is the score, Radiant taking out that mid tier 2. 4k gold lead, 7k XP lead. Or so faded, finding themselves just entity, moving on up uh, on those graphs here, finding themselves a nice lead. That team fight potential is only going to get stronger as Saibi already after that triple kill using that Midas. He's finding himself at 2.2k gold, so he will be very quickly on his way to a refresher if he decides that's what he wants to do. And I don't really see any reason not to. Gotham doesn't have any way to really respond to that, I guess. I mean, the mech is up. Pipe probably won't be too far off. Chicken MC knows how to farm. But the four golems just do so much damage, both magical and physical. It's just hard to to really mess with that and the fatal bonds and now desolate showing its power if that wow that was a nice disruption if that didn't go off he would have died to theory's ultimate and dimitri finds him though on the other side so they take him out anyways king kraken though gonna go down orbit and chicken mc take him out shout out even actually lives through that now dimitri's got to get out of here making his way towards a dagon he's got the null talisman and he's got the staff of wizardry hiding in the trees dodges the, uh, <laughs> there, they see him now. Dodges the dust, doesn't have the invis up anyway. Throw this way, Kerrigan's trying to just get a kill because he knows he's probably going to die here. He does have 10 wand charges, so let's see if, how much more he can get done with that. 30 seconds till the vendetta, though. So it looks like he will just be chased down. Throws another stun. Pops his wand charges to live just a little bit more. Now Theory's coming in. He's going to throw the sprout, but a nice blink over by Orbit, who's stunned up again by the spike carapace. Peon, in the meantime, picking up that black king bar, and then Theory! What? Oh, he canceled that other TP because of the blink and then saving his teammate there on the stairs with that tree block. So what a play there by Theory. And what a bro. I think Theory gets the bro award for that. We'll see if anyone from Gotham can uh, one-up with a nice team play there. And for anyone just tuning in, this is Sivo Season 2. This match happened on Monday. I'm just going to start casting a replay. Oh from Sivo of whatever round that week is cast one every night of the week we'll do like match of the week or whatever I think is going to be match of the week on Monday which is the default match night and then I will just need teams to friend me on Skype or until I set up my own little application for you guys to upload them to me upload those replays but in the meantime Corey in the top lane is gonna get bursted down pretty much immediately for there just a little too much god strength to even pop through that but as I was saying uh, I need the team's replays if you think you had a good game. Win or lose, don't spoil it for me. Send me that replay. I'm going to try to cast one every night from now on for the rest of the season. Unless, you know, I'm out of town, which I will be pretty soon. But that's what I'm going to aim to do. And then my team probably won't make it to the playoffs, so I'll be able to cover all of those games in the playoffs. And look at the ball rolling here. But a nice chaotic offering goes off. There's that alt in by Spectre. Corey immediately taken down. Actually not. Orbit gets an RP on everything, but he goes down too many golems there. Nice wall by Chicken MC as well. The damaging uh, heals going out on him as well. Peon gets taken down. I don't know if he used that BKB. It looks like he did, but maybe stunned up on those uh, alts of those golems. Stunned him up through that. that ugh, I cannot speak tonight. Throughout that BKB. Just not able to get a whole lot done. Spectre doing a lot of damage as well. Picked up the drums phase. Looks like he's going. He's got a blade of alacrity, so it could be the Yasha into the Manta, which I think is the better build. But it very well could be a defusal. I don't really know if there's a huge need for a defusal this game. No one's. I mean, it would be nice to drain enough mana so Magnus is sitting there without an RP, but I mean he's got enough. It's probably not going to happen. It's not like a PL where you've got a million things draining. It's just one Spectre. So I think the Manta's still better. Allows you to dodge that projectile stun, allows you to Manta out of, I think Shadow Demon's poison. I doubt the ult, that would just be too strong. And now Nyx throwing that vendetta, gonna go hunting here. It looks like he can find Cory, no problem. Cory with only 890 health, should be able to burst that out pretty quickly. Or you can just track Orbit. Orbit does have dust, so if he gets suspicious, he could pop the dust off, and Dimitri could find himself in a bad place. Orbit either expects a ward, yeah, and after that hit, he's gonna go for it here. I don't think he's gonna have enough. The Orchid comes in from afar. Actually, Theory just TPs in to throw it. So a nice little pick off there, using that uh, Nyx Assassin, Nature's Prophet, global TP uh, to its finest there. So nice play by Faded. Looks like they may just gear up for Roche. Yeah, they sent out the ward, and they probably don't know this. Unless they've got a gem, there are no wards here. Although... 
Got him probably expects this, but what can they really do? They can't... They can't take the fight here. Even with Chaotic offering down, I don't know. Without the RP, they've got no chance. Roshan has been and Rosh goes down at 26-42. And there's the defusal. So he does opt to pick up the defusal. I don't know. I like Manta better, but... Defusal is going to be great. The charges will be nice. People won't be able to run away from him as easily. I don't know if it also... It probably purges in power off of Sven, so it could be a good pickup for that reason. Now Dimitri, level 11, can almost permanent invis, so after he picks up that kill we saw a little bit earlier, immediately Vendetta's up again, looking for another pickoff. Theory is playing around with the TP, it looks like. Dimitri still stealth up, he finds Cory. Definitely gonna go on that, he can kill him solo. Doesn't matter, Theory takes it anyway. Now dominating here, just using his ultimate. And there's that refresher orb at 27 minutes, so that's going to be pretty dangerous. And I think this could be the final push for Faded. They're a heck of a lot stronger than Gotham City right now. With 10k gold and XP leads for Faded. Maybe going to pick off Orbit here. Probably not. He's sitting on full mana. There's still two outer towers to push. Looks like... Oh, I thought that was Theory going in. Peon goes to defend the top. Uh, they could do 4, protect 1 with Theory just, you know, split pushing, as Nature's Prophets always do, or they could just group up. I think they've got the team fight where they can just take a 5-on-5. Five five. Even with the RP, I don't know. And Nyx picks up a Dagon, so gonna be hunting those supports even more. Sentries are down, though, so we'll be able to see the Nyx coming in. Maybe they can bait that to get a pick off on the Nyx, who does help quite a bit in the team fight. Uh, with that spike, Carap is just disrupting everything, and multiple person stuns. They know the High Cliffs awarded the Familiars here, stunning up that support. Dimitri on the back lines. There's no sentry back here, so he's doing the right thing. He's just going to go on Cory, probably. He can solo him, no problem. He needs his team to start the ruckus in the front, though. And there it goes. Everything just unleashed with that Dagon. And now they turn around on to Dimitri with that Spike Carapace. Goes off. Lean is down, so this, the stun combination wasn't there. Radiance now there's the alt, there's the uh, spectral dagger going in, looks like the tower, they should just focus the tower, looks like that is what they're doing. Theory's got that Aegis, he's the Radiance one that picked it up. Tower is under attack. I don't know, um, Radiance I don't know if that death on Dimitri was fortified. necessary there. I think they, they probably could have just taken a full on fight, but... Or if they communicated just a little bit better, I don't think the Luna was moving Radiance anywhere. If they started the fight in the front, he denied. and then... You know, I don't even have to use the Vendetta Strike. Stun up those two supports, which Gotham is going to rely on heavily to, you know, disrupt and get a stun off for a Laguna Blade. And then take down Magnus and Sven quickly on the front lines. Maybe could have just got a 2 or 3 there, but, you know, whatever. Hindsight's 20-20. And obviously from a spectating point of view, it's a little easier for me to just make up these crazy plays. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And not in well, maybe do an way. item check. I, I've caught most things as the new in-game HUD is very nice. Crystallis BKB on Sven, so he's got the potential to do a lot of damage even with that, with the Empower. I saw the pipe used last fight. Uh, mech pipe up on Chicken MC. Theory, Orchid, uh, Shadow Blade, and a Midas as we've known. Phase Drums, uh, Diffusal Blade, looks like Spectre's going for a Heart, so fairly standard there. Refresher Ags on the Warlock, Dagon on Dimitri, and Dimitri actually going to town, takes out the Shadow Demon there, and keep cracking with the Medallion, and that's about all there is, uh, besides Orbit having the Blink Mana Boots, but let's get back to the fighting. So not a whole lot of key items really out right yet for Gotham City, as Faded is kind of just dominating the map with that Invisible Nyx presence, and then also Nature's Prophet. It looks like Orbit going to be taken out here by the Golems, only two used right now. It's like Refresher is used and he couldn't get off the second alt. So that'll be off cooldown when he gets up and then another two minutes on the Refresher. Uh, but another uh, 4 for 2 trade there for Faded. And with RP down for 87 seconds and Magnus down for another 30. Looks like this could be a tier 3 tower. Possibly two tier 3 towers as Theory's going to the bot lane. <laughs> Throws the silence but decides that that would have been a terrible idea. So the supports are back up as they're quite low levels. Actually, all of them are. The pains of being a support. But anyway. Net worth chart has been uh, the same positions for quite a while now. 
Oh, Akinich is probably leading there. It's going in third. Nice pick off there on the Lena. But Dimitri does pay the price. He does go down. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Has that Dust goes off from orbit. For celebration? You can chase Theory here. Theory though turns it around. Silence is gonna TP to out say, now. Looks like he's gonna be able to get it. Tower nice silence. They're not gonna be able to skewer through those trees to disrupt that TP. Which would have been the death of Theory for sure, so good play there. So five minutes on Roche, uh, the Aegis should be going down in about a minute. They didn't really even use it. I don't know if giving it to, to Nature's Prophet was the best idea. But Spectre's not really one of those heroes that can sit on the front lines, tank a tower, like, I don't know, Nakes or the Spirit Bear when you've got that Aegis, or even a Gyro, sort of. Like, you don't have a whole lot. You kind of need to come in once the fight's been started by that Warlock ult. And it looks like that's a Dagon level 2 on the Nyx Assassin now. You might even be able to just burst down the Magnus now. Who doesn't have a BKB. Had a great early game, was having a lot of farm. But now kind of falling back as the, the map is a little more restricted. Just by the presence that Faded's Heroes has. And it looks like Faded might be trying to group... Go into that top lane, take a five minute fight. Oh, Theory's gonna get caught out. They've got a gem. Yep, gem on Darkseer. Gonna throw that silence onto Orbit. Try to TP out of here, but it's not gonna be enough. He's got the Aegis just ran out, actually. So, Theory. I don't know, a bit of a misplay. He didn't know about the gem. So, Spectre's gonna ult just to see where they are. And now they're gonna go off that as they are all smoked. The dagger goes out. It lands on a couple. A nice two man stun there by Dimitri as well as the refresher ultimate with Ags used. Peon though doing work. Picks out Nyx. But that's a five man wipe for just a Dimitri. I'd say worth it. It looks like this uh, this push could be pretty devastating. It could be a Rax. The respawn times aren't terribly long. It's, and Fortify, let's see, Fortify's up in 20 seconds for Gotham City. They're gonna lose two towers, I think, here for sure. Whether the Rax goes, I'm not sure. The Chaotic Offering isn't up, and neither is that Refresher as well. Radiant used. Stop tower is and under I think attack. the Golems died already. Pion was Radiant doing a ton of work there. He's got that fallen. Hyperstone now, too. Surely that was he took out Dimitri in like two hits. Radiant's top tower is under attack. All right, Fortify is up now. They're going to have to use it to save this tower. Lena has respawned. Shadow Demon won't be far behind. Orbit's up now, and he's got that RP. He might die in the process, but it's probably going to be worth it for Gotham to save their racks. Actually, not much more, not much longer to wait. They're going to have to go pretty soon or lose the melee racks. Orbit's got the blink. But nice spacing here by Faded. Not one to get caught, and now silenced up. Actually, it looks like a creep just got silenced there by Theory. Saibi finding himself on the front lines. He's channeling that upheaval. Everyone's pretty slow. Maybe just sacrificing himself for his team so they can get out. But as I say, that like, Kraken gets RP'd. Solo RP. You're going to get screwed back now. And could Kraken with 3,000 gold. I don't really know what he's waiting to buy. I'd say he should get a Shiva's uh, or that Sheep Stick. And what an attack it is. But meanwhile, Theory just pushing bot now. A little bird tells me that Radiant's top barracks are under attack! So yeah, the melee racks goes down in the top lane, which is the more important one, so... Faded did a good job to take that early. Nyx looking for a pickoff here. Level 2 Dagon. I don't know if he's got enough. He's got enough for the Shadow Demon. That's not gonna be a problem. And he's lucky that that was an Observer Ward and not a Sentry. Sven picks up an AC, so he's gonna be hitting uh, pretty hard and very fast. All also with a lot more armor from that. Spectre, I don't know, the, I think the Desolate is pure damage. Yeah, it is pure damage, so still will take a lot from that, but I don't know, the, the armor is never bad. It'll be good for fighting that Nature's Prophet. And they've already got the pipe up. They've had the pipe up for a long time in that Darkseer. Peon, though, find himself in trouble in the top lane. TP and out. Not a problem. Now Darkseer, though, might be in trouble. Also trying to TP out, but not quite as tanky. He doesn't have an AC. Or, I guess he had the aura, but Sven left him. And Dagon, level 3 now on the Nyx. Check out the gold graph. Uh, 15. Almost 20k advantage. Maybe we'll say 18k. 19k, 15k XP lead. 
So yeah, Faded, as we can see and tell with the score 38 to 23, Faded doing very well in this game. Warlock even picks up a BKB himself. Beyond the sheep stay top of disruption there. Going off theory though, he's gonna go down here. Roshan should be back up, yeah, very, very soon. I'm gonna watch it respawn, boom. So Roche is back up, that's probably next on the docket for Faded. They need to get that Roche. I mean, the potential's always there for that RP one-man cleave now with that Sven having some items. So Faded does need to be careful. But if we do check the net, yeah, Sven is keeping up there. He's doing a great job of farming this game. 15k, only 2k behind Nature's Prophet, or 3k and then 2k behind Saibi. Now Dimitri doing a lot of work. He's there alone though, he pops the Vendetta just to get away from that. Peon's gonna TP out. And with that TP, actually it's probably a good opportunity to do the Roche now since Peon won't be able to TP back. Not that they have any towers to TP to, so maybe not. Probably a little scared to do the Roche is faded because the RP combination is there in that Roche pit. It would be pretty difficult. I don't think anyone can really solo it yet. Well, Corey probably can now with the heart. It won't be a very fast Roche, but they can definitely do it. And here they go. Everyone right now for Gotham is in the top lane. They probably saw Sven Shadow Demon pushing the wave. They don't know where these other three are. It looks like they're just trying to bait that Sven as they've been TPing in on him quite a bit, so definitely with Gotham Strat right now, it's just a TP. Or to bait that uh, Furion TP in with the Nyx gank. Or just trade Roche. Well, they don't know that Roche is going on. They may have their suspicions, but they're just going to try to trade it here for the top tier 2 tower. Fire's top tower is under attack. So Roche goes oh down. Oh dear, poor Roshan has fallen afoul of the Dyer's top tower has fallen. Oh, those don't actually type anywhere, turns out. Whoa, Roshan. Roshan doesn't have a texture. How dare they. Anyways, looks like Dimitri's going around for a flank. The ultimate from Spectre goes out. Spectre goes right into the fray. Uh, actually, two-man stun chicken. I'm seeing Peon caught in that from Dimitri. The chaotic offering goes out. RP hasn't been used. RP's used now, though. Still very healthy. Where's that chaotic offering? It's not going to be able to go off as Warlock gets bursted down. Corey on low health as well. So two for one trade. The Warlock goes down. Doesn't have buyback either. Chicken MC picked off there by Corey. Looks like able to get that kill. Now, can they go on Peon? Corey is going to go down. He had the Aegis, though. But it's not necessarily how you want to use your Aegis. They wanted to use it to push, that's for sure. Good Magnus go. And looks like the Orchid proc not going to be enough to take Orbit out after he gets back to the Fountain. So some nice TPs out. Uh, really good focus on that Warlock there and that RP from Orbit. And then Sven just owning him. I guess doing what Sven does. Lots of damage. Wasn't able to get off that uh, second chaotic offering after after he popped the refresher. As Orbit wasn't caught in the first one, so we got a nice RP off to buy the time. And then Sven killed him in that, that four second stun. Or how long is it now? 3.75, yeah, four. And then Daedalus on the Sven, arguably a bigger item than this Dagon level four as Dagon. Is probably at this point in the game starting to scale off a little bit. The supports. Still very susceptible to that, but everyone else, you know, pretty tanky. And Cory with the heart, not a whole lot of damage, sort of just going for a sustain build, I guess, in these team fights against that Sven. It's not a bad idea. He's got the Desolate, so that's another. He's doing about 200 damage per attack on heroes if they're somewhat away from their allies. And with the dispersion, you know, it takes less damage as well. I don't really know how that works. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And of course he's got the heart. So huge HP items are pretty good against Sven. Although they are not good against Nyx, because Nyx does lifesteal, and the lifesteal that he steals from you, he also deals to you in damage. So if you're wondering why people say that, that is why. Brace yourself for sad tidings. Radiance Courier. Oh, the Radiance has Courier been is slain. down. Looks like Fade gets revenge. They've they've avenged the death of their spider frog, so. Probably feeling good about themselves right now. Radiance top barracks are under attack. And what an attack it is. Alright, so refresher off in 15 seconds. I still think uh, if Orbit is caught in the RP, they can easily take a five-man fight. 
Or if they smoke and catch two, I don't know, then they can four man and split push, get two racks at once with that Nature's Prophet up, who also just finished up a BKB. So Sheepstake, Shiva's, BKB, Lothar's theory, pretty rich this game as he is the top net worth. But Sven has just overtaken the Warlock. He's got that Daedalus AC BKB. He's pretty much got everything he needs for the big plays. Which is why they picked up that Sven on top of that Magnus. But with that Empower, Sven hits for quite a bit. And then the Daedalus crate will be nice as well. Ghost Scepter up on some of the supports. Uh, nothing new here yet. Looks like Dimitri. This has got to be Dimitri. Yeah, gonna get caught out. Maybe not. Nice by Carapace. Demonic Purge goes off. Dimitri buying himself a lot of time, but definitely not gonna get out of that. The and now, Fade did kind of forced to wait around for a minute until the Nyx Assassin respawns. He is doing uh, quite a bit of disruption in the team fights with that Spike Carapace. Always stunning. 1 to 2. I've been looking for that. Theory pushing the bot lane, and now they're coming for Theory. He's got to know this, and he's definitely got to get out of here. It is just Magnus Darkseer, so probably going to be able to get away from that. And do they even have any true sight? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's Gem. On Chicken MC. The theory Radiant is pushing the bot lane. He's gonna force a TP back from Lena at least. Violence. And everyone else sort of run back as well. Mechanism finally finished on King Kraken. I'm sure that was a while ago, but definitely wasn't that fast of a mech. Ghost Scepter up on side B. That's definitely going to ensure that he's able to get his uh, refresher alt combination off. So a good pick up there. As last time, the only thing that killed him was uh, the Sven Cleave after RP. So as long as he pops the Ghost Hyper before RP, he'll be fine. Definitely won't be taken down by anything else. Maybe Laguna Blade. It's going to do quite a bit. Laguna Blade's not even level 3 yet. So yeah, not going to be able to one-shot or anything like that, but if he's, you know, half health, maybe it does enough. But still a great pickup, and now Cory going for Butterfly, just for that evasion chance versus Sven, who isn't that far off from an MKB, so if he sees the Butterfly, he can probably react to that. And I think MKB might not just be a bad next item choice. Uh, Chicken MC is a little farther away, so the gem isn't there to reveal Dimitri, and he is quickly scurrying away, as I think he himself realized that as well. This would be a good place to fight for Faded. I guess for both teams, really, just trying to get their alts off that are very based on positioning. Well, let's see, Roche is about four minutes away. I typed it out, but I can't actually type in replays, so who knows where that went. Corey is still pretty far off from the butterfly. Needs the... I can't do math. 2,700 gold. Minus 370, so... Yeah, still needs quite a bit. 2300. So, can probably opt to push. They should probably push. I mean, Sven is getting fat. If he gets a rapier or something and manages to survive through a team fight, that could be the GG here. Dimitri, though, with the pickoff on the Shadow Demon, that's what they needed. Does he have buyback available? No, he does not. So, this is that window of opportunity Faded needs to push into the base here. The refresher uh, chaotic offering is up. So is RP though, so probably should just keep an eye on Orbit, as he's going to be the player to watch right here, because Sabi is not going to miss a Chaotic Offering. Waiting for that Creep Wave. They don't have a pipe, so you, you normally want a pipe to break the high ground. It's never a bad idea. That way, if you do get caught in RP, it's pretty much uh, negated by the pipe. But in this case, Sven would be there to blow your face off. Now Cory dodging in onto Cory, believe it or not. Trying to TP out, but the Desolate there just doing so much damage. Times two Desolate there. Uh, TP in by Peon. BKB as well into God's Strength. Dimitri though. Nice play there, popping that Vendetta as Chicken MC just a little too far away. Saibi's caught up. He's got that Ghost Scepter on. Here's one ult coming off now. The Refresher is going to be popped now. And then the ult number two on the way as he gets first into 600 HP, but able to live. Able to get that off. Now chilling at 340 HP. Going to live. Uh, Saibi picking up a double kill, and that's going to be the GG as everyone calls it. So Saibi barely got that second one off, but I think I just with one it, it was going to be enough. But the game is fallen. called. So yeah, a little bit of old school, taking it back a couple months to when Dignitas was running the Warlock Spectre. And I don't know, sort of 
So sort of pretty old school on the side of Gotham as well. I mean, haven't seen the Magnus Fen since, well, from what I can really attack. remember, since EG got that like four-man, one-hit ultra kill on the Sven Magnus combo. I think they were Strange playing Navi in that game, but anyway, I'm Helium from FMBP Dota. If you're already watching this, you're on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash FMBP Dota. Please subscribe my to that goodness. and youtube.com slash FMBP Dota. You should subscribe to that as well. I've got some in-game cosmetic item sets and uh, NZXT avatar mouse to give out, so I'll start subscribing to my Twitch. I'd like the Twitch to be at 100, and then I'll start giving some prizes out to random viewers and whatnot. I'm Radiance gonna try to do a cast attack. every night around 9 p.m. Central Time U.S. Uh, of a SIVO match. Like I said, I will need Radiance the replays, so Team Captains, fallen. friend me on Skype, and made some posts on SIVO's website, and I'll probably be in contact with a lot of you, just bugging you to send them to me. So please do that. And yeah, subscribe if you like what you saw. Kali will be back from Iceland soon, so he'll be co-casting with me. Uh, it's a little harder to have a co-caster in replays, but we'll make it work. That's how we got started, so it won't be too hard for us. But here's the score screen. Hope everyone enjoyed, and I'm signing off for the night to go play some Dota, possibly CSGO. Peace out.